As a dry eye specialist, owner of an ocular aesthetics clinic, and YouTuber that looks into the ocular effects of makeups and skincare, I get a lot of questions about castor oil and its impact on dry eye as well as lash growth and lash health. Today, we'll discuss castor oil and its potential use for the eyes. I'm covering lash growth and dry eye syndrome in today's video. Welcome to Eye School with Dr. D, where my goal is to arm you with the knowledge you need to take control of your eye health and have the best vision possible. Like and subscribe for videos every week. You've made it to Eye School with me, Dr. D. In today's lesson, we're discussing castor oil. Can it really grow your lashes, or is that a claim that's too good to be true? Before we get started, this channel is all about eye education. I try to bring you the latest and greatest in eye care and education. And it's also become an amazing community. And I would love nothing more than for you to share your experience and expertise with lash growth, with castor oil down below so that we can all learn from each other. If you like this video today, be sure to hit that like button down below so that YouTube knows this content is helpful. So I have long been in the camp that castor oil is pretty darn good at moisturizing the eye and not bad as a dry eye treatment, but if you'd asked me if it might actually be useful for lash growth or um, the control like of the lid microbiome, I'd probably say, nah, not really. However, just recently, an article was published titled Therapeutic Potential of Castor Oil in Managing Blepharitis, Meibomian Gland Dysfunction, and Dry Eye. Now, this was published in Clinical and Experimental Optometry in August of 2020. I'll be sure to link the article down below, but this was a literature review looking at the therapeutic potential of castor oil. So first, castor oil is a natural derivative of the ricinus communis plant, and it has a long history of therapeutic as well as cosmetic use. It possesses recognized anti-inflammatory, anti-nociceptive, or like pain control, antioxidant, antimicrobial, and insecticidal properties, and it has a really good safety and tolerance profile. So recently, castor oil has found applications within commercial ophthalmic eye drop preparations, and it does prove effective in counteracting tear film lipid insufficiency and tear film instability, and it shows potential in managing dry eye disease secondary to meibomian gland issues. All this means, those fancy words, it's oily, it's tolerated well in the tear film. We've started using it in some eye drops and it's been used pretty effectively, especially in folks who have issues with their meibomian glands and don't have enough oil in their tears. And it's been without reported side effects. Castor oil is also used industrially as a lubricant and an antifungal. So in its hydrogenated or non-hydrogenated forms, castor oil has been used extensively as a topical skin conditioning agent, an emuls emulsion stabilizer, and a surfactant in cosmetics or even in hair growth agents. It's commonly found in eye cosmetics and eye makeup removers as well. It does have antimicrobial and antioxidant properties, which has implications for the management of blepharitis in dry eye and possibly even in anti-aging. When it comes to hair growth, I was surprised to find that early reports indicate that ricinoleic acid, so that's from castor oil, has been employed as a treatment for hair loss. Its molecular structure resembles that of prostaglandins, so prostaglandins are very important because that's something, we use prostaglandins in eye care to help grow lashes. The brand name for that medication is called Latisse. And so their selective inhibition and synthesis has shown to augment human hair growth, including human eyelashes. And that's exactly what we see in using a prostaglandin um, in Latisse. Okay, so all this really means is that we're using castor oil, it's working for dry eye disease, and there really aren't any adverse effects with it. So if you like to use castor oil, it's not a bad thing to use. It has a good safety profile, and it does help in dry eye disease. Now, the thing to know about dry eye disease is that it occurs secondary to a wide spectrum of lid issues. We've talked about that on this channel, my bomian gland dysfunction. You can have anterior blepharitis, where you truly have these dead skin cells accumulating. You can have blocked glands. Um, and that's something that we're looking for ways to 
to alleviate, right? Because we know that the lids play a big role in dry eye syndrome and what happens at the lids affects meibomian glands. So it's possible that these that castor oil could be incorporated in the treatments for the lids as well. We talked about how there are antimicrobial effects of castor oil. I've also talked on this channel about how tea tree oil, even though it kills demodex and, and does maybe good things for the lid margin, it also can have a detrimental effect on the meibomian glands. So the fact that we're finding castor oil is so safe and we have yet to have any evidence of it impacting our meibomian glands negatively means that this is potentially a viable treatment. So evidence of the beneficial effects on the lipid layer, the tear film integrity, lash health, and meibomian gland functionality suggests that topical application of pure castor oil to the periocular skin around here may offer a safe, natural, affordable, effective management option for common abnormalities of the tears and the ocular surface. And this indicates that a more extensive and thorough exploration of this topic is definitely warranted. It is worth it to look into it more. The other thing that I want to kind of go back to is the fact that because um, it has commonalities with prostaglandins, castor oil may actually not only make the lashes look healthier and more moisturized, but there is potential for it to grow the lashes. I was recently sent this product by Dr. Diane Hillal Campo. She's an ophthalmologist who's developed an eye-safe line of products called 2020 Beauty. And I initially waited to say anything about it because I wanted to wait for this castor oil video. The, this is called the Get Growing Lash and Brow Serum. And it's ophthalmologist tested, safe for the delicate eye area and sensitive skin, safe for contact lens wears, vegan, paraben free, cruelty free. And um, it talks about, it's packed with conditioning and hydrating castor oil, argan oil and coconut oil. This serum will help promote the appearance of longer, fuller looking lashes and brows. And so this is a castor oil product with some other oils as well that you just apply to the lashes and the brows. It's very clear, it feels great, it just feels like an oil. But I can now tell you that it is possible that this may help your lashes and your brows grow. And to me, with a really nice safety profile, there's no problem with putting it on your lashes and your eyebrows. I hope that helped with your understanding of castor oil. Again, this is a question y'all have asked me multiple times. I'll link the actual study down below so you can read all of the things they talk about um, because they did a really extensive literature review in that study. That is it for today's iSchool lesson. I'll see you next time. Class is dismissed.